all again, and welcome to Manch Talk. I am Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are, about almost midway through January. 10th of January. What's weird, <laughs> I mean, we always talk about weather, it always seems, but for the next 10 days, every single day is gonna be above freezing at some point during the day. And I'm like, it really worries me because like, oh my God, are we gonna have snow in May? Oh. You know what I mean? Like, or is this just gonna be one of those, we, we did have a weird winter, oh God, 15, I'd say, 15 years ago, I remember it being incredibly warm because we used to have backyard fire and we were out there like in January in I, like you know, sweatshirts. It really is somewhat seasonal. I know everyone's trying to weaponize the weather. It's like, oh, what's the last thing that neighbors talk to each other about? The weather. Yep. And now that's been politicized yeah, I, too. Oh, right. uh, funny how that is. But, you know, it's interesting. I, I think one of the secret weapons we have is uh, memories as they come up in your social yeah. media. So they try and tell you all these things are happening and, and it's new like, and it's unusual. That was 11 years ago. And, and then you're the like, thing. oh, wait. Wait, I posted literally 11 yes. years ago. It's 50. Everyone get yeah. outside on the same right. day. So, so it just we, we remember yes. things. And it's just like you think you think back to when you're a kid and the things you remember are usually like distorted and you're like, "No, no, don't you remember?" And your yeah. you know, your older it, brothers and sisters are like, no. no, that didn't happen. Yeah, it's funny. I was talking to my sister yesterday. Same thing. She's like, do you remember when dad and I used to fight every day? And, and I'm like, no, like, no, no I, I think I just set that out of my mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> we do have a guest today. We have a guest. So. <laughs> we invited uh, Victoria Sullivan to join us um, today because why not? You know, why not, why not have the opinions of three strong <laughs> I'm the, I'm women why instead not of guest. just two? Um, <laughs> what you say? I'm the why not guest. Why not? No, you're the no, I mean, it's always good. <laughs> yes, why guest. That's right. Um, before we started, Carla goes, so what are we talking about? Homeless? And I'm pr like, pretty much, because that just seems to be what the focus of everybody is. Um, I did try to make some notes so that I can stay a little bit. Um, the first thing I wanted to do, I've sent the producer some pictures. Um, there's a picture of... Um, needles that a friend of mine who does not live in Manchester sent me a um, link, sent me a picture screenshot of something and said, hey, this is in your neighborhood. I thought you'd be interested in it. And it doesn't matter who the woman is that posted it, but she posted, I post a lot about how much I like our trails in Manchester. However, lately, my favorite spots have been becoming more and more unsafe. Today, my dog almost stepped on a needle that was poking up in the middle of the Manchester Rail Trail on the west side. I did move it to the side with a tree branch. Sadly, I think our, tr our trail walks will have to move to Goffstown, Hooks at Auburn now. It's sad the decline in safety on them over the last year. I want my kids to be able to enjoy the trails here. However, it would be negligent on my part to allow them to do so on the west side until things change. And I reached out to her and I asked her where because I was curious. And it was she, the overpass near Parker Street, which is where my house, my old house was. And I thought, first thing I said to Dan, but we painted it with pretty paintings. Right. So that everything's happy to <laughs> see happy paintings. And I said, looked at Dan, I go, you know, now, now I'm thinking about it, and Dan and Jenny go through yep. the Piscataqua River Park all the time, and you know I'll ha I better my dog better not ever get hurt from the d debris. <laughs> right. left. We don't care about Dan, no, but my Dan dog. Like, hey. <laughs> I'm just saying, I this isn't well, even plus, something I'm thinking about. Yeah, I mean, but the you other do the same thing. You got you know you, open. Well, yeah, but uh, but like, um, so my husband picks up trash for We Heart West in yep. the neighborhood and part of our area is down Dubuque, sort yep. of when you go from the top of the hill down. And uh, recently, two or three cars have started parking on our cul-de-sac and we were like, oh, well, what's that yeah. about? Yeah. But okay, just kind of going up. And uh, that is he unusual. mentioned it's not a street that anybody no, would randomly just, be parking because on. Because it also just looks like it ends, like <sighs> it just goes up a little hill and so you can't really see it turns in right so you're just like oh i'm not going to go up there but that little part louis said he was out there the other day and there was a car that was parked there for two days and he was like oh when i was cleaning that stretch there There's was like a whole like the all the needles yeah. Yeah. were like thrown out they yeah. were like oh i'm cleaning my car let me just dump well, this that's, here that's what and the girl said she said in that area um I know she was messaging me. She said, it was obvious that someone had been sleeping there. There was remnants of a fire. There was poop and food containers. Yep. And she said there were tons of the caps to the needles mm -hmm. in the area. And this is the picture that she had posted. I mean, wow. it doesn't look like much, but it is. It's yeah. just, you know, this yeah. is not okay. When I cleaned down at the uh, Valley Street Cemetery, you know, of course, we found a lot of needles and stuff. Yep. But what people 
the, the secondary um, concern isn't is that when your dog is sniffing, they could be sniffing fentanyl. Exactly. They could be sniffing opioids. It's not just the way you can see the visible presence of the needles. It's the stuff that you can't see. Well, it's also if you get pricked. I mean, you could get yeah. AIDS. You, you can, can get hepatitis. hepatitis. You can yeah. get, you right. know, Why? It's, it's not. And, uh, and this is this is the where my, I think, I know this is where my frustration comes from. And I, I imagine that this is what many people in our city, you know, I'm a member of the Friends of the Piscataqua River Park, yep. which is the park that basically runs from the George Smith soccer field up through the woods, which there's numerous trails, um, and then across the little wooden bridge over and up until um, you get to the ice arena. It should be a beautiful park that the city just has not taken care of. So we formed an organization to say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna pitch in and we're gonna try to reclaim some of it. Now Dan took pictures the other day. You know, he went up and he went through up to up the hill to Theophile. There's a path that goes up that way. Um, and there's a homeless camp there. You know, he yeah. takes pictures. And I'm thinking, okay, see, this is just getting to be annoying. Well, you can't en we can't enjoy our, the trails or the parks no. because there's debris everywhere. And this is, so when I was running for mayor and we were on debate stages, and this is, this is why I've repeatedly come after Joyce Craig and asked for her to resign. I, yeah. I firmly believe... She, Rumor is she's not running again, so having her being a lame duck mayor is going right. to be more dangerous for the city. Um, but when we were on debate stages, and I would say we can't enjoy the parks and the trails. I live on the south end, yep. and you know we had trails there that lead to the Little League and soccer fields, and we stopped using them because of the encampments and the yep. needles. And I couldn't even get volunteers to come no, help me clean anymore it. because it became such, it, there was feces, yep. I mean, it just became unsafe, right? And on debate stages, she would look at the camera and say that I was I was negative and I was making our city look bad and then our trails were perfectly safe. Well, after the election, mm -hmm. as you know, um, a 75 year old veteran who was walking through the trails as he did most days was brutally murdered Just by some by um, somebody that was living in the trails that had been let out on PR bail. And you know, people are like, well, you get so angry at the meetings. My son and his friend were in the trail 24 hours before that. They were using those trails. They rode their bike in the trail to get down to five below. And it, I just can't imagine if that man was in the trail when right. they were down right. there yep. and they were the victims. So, so, you know, that's why I'm angry. I have been raising red flags about this warning. Ask, begging the city for help. I mean, begging the city for help. And what we saw last week was another man that died in the trails. Yep. And we had somebody arrested there who had committed armed robbery in one of the stores nearby. And this is in our backyards. And, and, and so I think the numbers just recently came out. There were 27 murders in 2022 in New Hampshire. So that's still a very yep. nice, low, reasonable right. number, right? We don't live in Chicago. But <laughs> three of those in Manchester were out of state homeless people who murdered granite staters. Right. And so my yeah. question is, where are they coming from? How do they know to come here? I've had several people contact me on social media saying things like, I, oh, I overheard, yeah. I was at a bus station, I was taking yeah. a bus and I overheard a whole bunch of homeless yeah. looking people, vagrants, hobos, whatever the term du jour is. Um, saying, hey, like we heard there was like good yep. Bennies up in well, Manchester, New Hampshire, and we're all heading up there. I think you and I have a mutual friend, and I don't, while I don't recall it, this, the discussion back when, she did say I had this discussion. Um, she used to live in Florida, and she would go down to the park where the homeless was. So she talked to the people. You know, she was very familiar with the homeless. And then she said one day, all of a sudden, they were all like packed up and ready to go. And she thought, well, that well, that's weird. And she said, where are you going? And they said, oh, we're getting on the bus to go to Manchester, New yeah. Hampshire. A whole so, group of people from Florida. When I was coming in here this morning, a woman stopped me on the street. Um, she, just, she just recognized me and we started chatting. And she was telling me, um, she, she said she, she's a Democrat, but she has lost faith in what's happening here. And that she she watches my Facebook stuff and, and my ideas. And she said, you know, she's got a friend that came here from Rochester, New York mm -hmm. for safe stations. And... Didn't and you want to help people, but, but we, we didn't. Can't so with safe, it. so with safe stations, we made big promises, and then people got their egos all bloated and decided, "Hey, everybody can come here," and they did. They were actually saying everyone can come here. There was actually advertising saying that we had safe stations, and what 
what the city did was invite all these people here without being able to provide them the resources. It was inhumane yeah. what they did. But that that is still out there that people will come. But the other part of that, Carla, is that we've got the courthouse here. So yeah. when people are arrested and they go to court here and they're let out on PR bail, they're put right back on our streets. They hide in the encampments. And that's why we've got... You know, not every homeless person is dangerous. Of course, there are some people that are just down on their luck. But we don't know who's who because they're letting violent criminals back out on the street. There was a guy yesterday that was arrested for assault, got released on PR bail, and got arrested again for assault wow. on the same day. And, you know, and I think we should also not lose sight of, you know, the, the, the human component here where it's like, but by the time you're homeless, you've burnt a lot of bridges yeah. right like like we you know we understand the notion from the 80s of tough love some people say that's maybe not the best approach and all of that but in order for you to get to the stage where you're living on the streets and actually one of these articles in the union leader either yesterday or today one of the guys was like well i've been homeless for six years and it's my choice right i am a drug addict and uh and oh my only question is where do i go right. next yeah. so and it's like well not to the west side that's right. <laughs> oh, no, they're all going to the west side. Yeah. I know. So they're shipping them to the Cashin cash Center. If um, I'll come back to Cashin Center, but I do want to post a picture. Kyle, if you could post a picture of George the Burge. George, this man, if you see this man, you should call the police. Um, this is the man that was in the tent when the baby was born, um, Christmas Day or whatever day it was. His name is George the Burge. He's surprisingly, I believe he's 45 years old. Um, if you see him or know where he is, you can contact the Manchester Police at 603-668-8711 or the Crime Line 603-624-4040. You can stay anonymous. You don't have to give your name. Um, they are looking for him because he, they, there are char charges pending for neglect and will, you know, all sorts of things. And this is when people lose any compassion for the well, homeless. When so you see that they they left a baby even to Even worse, die, because right? I was like, okay, George the Burge, who are you? So I Google. Okay. So um, I I can Here comes go back. the rap sheet. No, I can go, just <laughs> Google. You don't even have to go into police rap sheets. In 2017, there was a picture of him. I can, it's whatever. Um, six, amazing what five years can do. Yeah. Um, he was wanted on an arrest warrant out of other agencies and was part of this um, police raid, SWAT raid that took place on 472 Grant Street where they arrested a bunch of people um, to do with drugs and Suboxone and whatnot, whatever. So he was there. So that was my first thing. Then I see that just um, in June 2021, so we're talking a year and a half ago, there was an uh, article about cleaning crews attempt to cl clear encampment for unhoused people in the bucket area of Douglas Street, mm -hmm. right, over in our neck of the woods. And oh, look, George is quoted. <laughs> Some people don't want to be inside. So if they want to come to an encampment like this or a community, the city could give us that option. Don't force us to go in the shelter. And I, we tried to play a video, but it was too long. It wouldn't work. Um, WMUR did a little clip about they have uh, the fire department put eviction notices on all the tents on Manchester Street saying they have to move by the 17th. And the video was, you, if you look on MUR's um, page, it's worth a watch. It starts out with a man who's in a tent who ca catches himself on fire in a tent. And you think, I don't know how that happens. I don't know about you, but I've never actually caught myself on fire. Um, and you're, and it goes on and it's showing all these people. And there's a girl and her name was Kaylee Chaput. And she's like, eh, you know, like, I guess I got to move. I got to have to find someplace else to pitch a tent. And she's right. a young 20 something year old girl. And I'm thinking, the hell is wrong with you why aren't you just functioning as an actual adult and living indoors like actual humans do but what she said is important because the only thing that this city has for a plan is to move people and move people and move people and move people right they're not doing what they need to do i got a call from the governor's office yesterday yep. and they said we just want to let you know all the work that we actually are doing out yep. here we sort of stay under the radar because it's not our city yep. but we are providing support to the city they have outreach teams here all of the time yep. as the governor has stated he's given not he, but the state has returned tens of millions of dollars back to the city for homeless, for housing issues, like not just feeding the homeless, taking care of them, but getting housing, addiction help, uh, mental health help. Yep. And I, I, I asked for an audit for that money. I want to know where it all went. And 
um, the other night after the meeting, after I left the meeting, Pat Long actually asked for an audit of those funds too. Good. But for the fact that the aldermen don't know where that money is, right. it's concerning. Right, because right? the aldermen are the ones running the city. They're, whether, supposed, to, they're supposed to be overseeing They everything. can't just say, okay, yes, okay, we're going to allow that funding and never see it again. There should be a, they should have to come back and report what they've done with that yep. money and be responsible to the taxpayers. Because what we, we said this last week, where is the result? Where are we seeing a decrease in the number of unhoused, Housed. housing, vulnerable, yep. or whatever we're and, calling And these them. are not insignificant numbers no. we're talking Tens about. Like of a, a, there, there was one thing in the paper where it was $34 million that they spent on 8,000 people. So that's 2,700-ish dollars per Month. person per month and and i was like what, what? like You're where like, is what? that going yeah well so one of the things we talked about over the weekend that i think is is so so we like to complain and everything and then it's like okay this is a hard nut to crack what are some solutions and so one thing i do want to talk about is we talk about it on the show all the time incentives matter right yeah. so if you are spending if you're subsidizing poverty you're going to get more poverty you're going to get people getting on buses and flying Florida right. and coming here for better services. So I actually think, and everyone's going to hate me for this, so here we go. These Glad I'm non, here today. These, <laughs> non, these nonprofits that all make a lot of money from the from from the government so we basically have what we have is we have the homeless but then we have this whole class yeah. of nonprofits and organizations where the people who work for them are making hundreds of thousands of dollars in salaries right they get paid whether they solve the problem yep. or not if we want to tie incentives to results the kpi the actual thing that we should be looking at is how many nonprofits can we put out of business because they did their job yeah. and got rid right. of the problem? Yeah, and a friend of a mutual friend of ours that you introduced me to was homeless, and he he, he spoke with me a lot yep. about this over the weekend, and you know he he is right. And John DePietro, our friend, is, has mm -hmm. brought this up before too. There's a lot of money to be made in keeping Manchester where it is, yep. and not solving the problems. Those organizations don't want to go out of business and they do go out of business if they solve the problem so we've got a system that is set up backwards, backwards. right the right? incentives are unaligned with the goals that we're actually trying to i will achieve. say there's there's one organization Unless the goal is to have a lot of people who make a yep. nice fat salaries off taxpayer there's money there's one organization in this city and she hates it when i bring it up because she wants to stay she just because she does the work for her heart she doesn't want the recognition right. is the 1269 yep. cafe yep. they really do great work their goal is to get people off the street and into independent living and you know she would be very happy to be unemployed you right. know i mean i don't even know but if she gets paid a, right. i think she's a volunteer and that, but that's she's the exception to the rule she is the exception but I every mean, every th every organization should function in liberty house yep every yep. organization should function in that way the goal shouldn't be to continue to feed money into these processes that keep people on the streets the goal should be getting in, into independent housing yep. independent living transitional housing is really important we don't this city, I talk about it all the time, but this city doesn't concentrate on that at all. Nope. And the things that we could be doing today, right now today, is cutting back the red tape on businesses that mm -hmm. want to have transitional housing or repurpose what they have, cut back the red tape for homeowners that want to have an apartment or an in-law apartment, yep. and start working, you know, those are things we can do today to make things better instead of talking about building buildings that take years to build. Yep. Well, right. and take millions of dollars. I was surprised to read, and I'm not d diminishing the value of this this renovation in any way. Um, where uh, I think it was on Manchester Street, a developer bought this building. Yep. It used to have a mission in it, and it's re revamping it, and I believe it was for 11 units, right? And it, it isn't going to be. They'll be lower income. But the, he's saying it's definitely not, he's not, his goal isn't transitional housing. He's not providing homes for the homeless. He's thinking more artists that are coming to work in the theater, whatever. He wants to but elevate was, the neighborhood. But it what was he wants to do. $1.9 million yeah. to renovate 11 units. I'm like, wait, I got to do that math. It was $172,000 a unit. And I thought, That's a house. there's something wrong. Well, I mean, I could renovate a building for $172,000 a unit. Like, physically by myself it well, just it's amazing nice right. Cowboys, well, the, right? <laughs> like, oh, well no. the problem is building costs have gone up yep. ex 
exponentially since you know since covid started and we started having supply chain issues so even and their labor issues so yeah, i don't know maybe are. the unhoused could well, uh, work so on people, building we, out the apartments they want to live in let's even, i don't know let's even bring it to a simpler thing because okay we're not going to get joe living in a tent that just his name's not really joe but that lived yeah. in a tent and just caught himself on fire isn't going to be working <laughs> on somebody's property i hope he's okay he was okay. okay. He refused service. Oh, so he was um, okay. He refused, refused service because they were right there. Right. Um, but, you know, I hear homeless people because it's the same thing. And we say this all the time. I would love to help people, but you have to try to help yourself. So when I hear and you hear this all the time, year after year after year, if the city would just give us a place no. where we could live and take care of. And it, first of all, that there is no secret space that you can be given. You either have to be giving somebody else's property or even if it's city property, that's my property. Well, I pay for that property. But yeah. here's the thing. You say, give us a lot. Let's play the game. We're going to give you this acre of land and you're going to be able to live on it and take care of it. Drive down Manchester Street. You don't take care of the spaces you have. There is filth everywhere. I do hope that Ryan, um, Kyle's paying attention. This is what the Department of Public Works has to deal with. That is human poop. Oh, yep. Yep. I got human pictures like that all poop. the time. Yep. All so the time. now we're expecting Department of Public Works workers to go out there and shovel up human poop and needles. Yeah. And listen, if, if the homeless want their own space that they can take care of, they can start taking care of the spaces that they're in already. I mean, because I'm getting tired of seeing That's these like pictures. the encampment that was behind me. We called it Cracker Barrel right. Encampment. And people right. like, where's Cracker Barrel? It's just, it's the billboard for <laughs> Cracker Barrel. And they were building encampments down there. It cost the poor guy like $30,000 yep. that owned it to clean it all out yep. because all they did was destroy the property. Yep. And these people that are like, oh, no, leave them alone, let them live off no. the grid. Well, the problem is they don't want to live off the grid. Like, they want to live on our grid. They want us to provide. Cause well, well cause this I, guy is like, well, I want the freedom. Well, and then they to, say, well, but, where are know, we supposed to put, get us, give us, give, give us, us porta, porta potties. potties? Well, who do you think's paying, paying for, for the porta well, potties? Well, I mean, I'm sure that the, the, the cleaning crew I would understand. probably prefer that there's a porta potties. I would prefer that there's a porta potties. But we got rid of the porta potties because we did this last year. We did it last year. They were doing drugs in them and destroying the porta potties. But if you want to live off the grid, like, don't come and take they're not living off the grid they're living here because they can get stuff here right if you truly want to live off the grid you live off the grid you don't live in the city move to tennessee like move, move to a, like, like, like west virginia i don't know it's, where. it's yeah. warmer <laughs> tennessee don't hate me hate I'm sorry me, <laughs> but but it's warmer it's and it's way cheaper so it's kind of like i don't just don't even no, understand i've asked people there was this this elderly gentleman that I've seen him at the 1269 Cafe and I've seen him on the streets and I talked to him and I he was laying on the ground one day in pain. His back was hurting him, but he's laying on the cold ground. With, there's nothing worse for your back, right? And I said to him, like, why, like, if, if we could get you to go to Florida, because he, he made it clear he doesn't want to live in some place, right? He wants to live on the streets. I said, okay, if we could get you a ride to Florida or someplace at least warm where you would feel better, would you go? And he said, no. This is, this is where I live. This is where I'm staying. And, you know, so you, there will always be a handful of people like that on the street. But a handful would be tolerable. But when you, when, you know, the mayor admits that three quarters of our, our population here right now, they're homeless, which is actually 1,700 people are homeless on our streets right now, um, that, that three quarters of them aren't where, from where here. Where did that number come from? She said it. She said one. Oh, really? oh the All 1,700 the is the, is the is homeless. the people who do not have a permanent home. So. Right. That 138, 140 yeah. are the people who literally are sleeping on the Three, sidewalk. 300 okay. of them are sleeping on the sidewalk. Okay. Okay. Out of the 1,700 have no housing, so like they're they're flopping places, right? right? 300 have no place at all. They're on okay. the streets. Right, and those are the ones that are going in the shelters yeah. or in the 1269 cafe. And the, or those are state numbers. The state or the cash in center. We oh, only have yeah. five minutes, so I do want to talk about it. I do want to talk about yeah, okay, it. Go ahead. Right, we'll, because we'll flip right to that. So, so basically, what happened was, right, so now they've given these uh, eviction notices. Uh, which on some yeah. level just seems so ridiculous. That's so the government, you know right? Like, do? oh, they don't gonna move. They're going to give them a citation. Them a right, right. For, to people they, who can't pay. they can't pay. Right. So, I mean, that could be a way where it's like, okay, then, you know, the excuse becomes, do we put them a, <laughs> back in jail? Like, well, what's they happening? They don't even but have IDs, the point. these people. You can't get them for a citation. So, so what's happening to society, basically, is at some stage, we didn't like the way that 
people who were institutionalized were being treated, right? Which was valid. Which was valid, 100%. But instead of actually fixing that problem, right. we, 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 yeah, we put it on the streets. And now we have this problem. But basically what we're doing is we are creating a society where we're making like the public sphere an insane asylum yeah. because we're accommodating the worst parts of society to everyone else. Now we have to tolerate that. And I'm sorry, but if you don't respect yourself enough to, if we give you a porta potty, don't destroy right. it. If you're in the, the Piscataway well River in the tents and I stop to talk to you and I say, hey, what's your story? And you're like, you have a good story. You got addicted to opioids. You're trying, you're working construction. But then you watch how it gets dirtier and dirtier yeah, and they're and not just... picking up their trash anymore and whatever. And it's just, it's insidious. And mm -hmm. we have to say, as a society, we're not willing to tolerate yep. this because otherwise no. it's that's going to be the norm. That is what it's like so in San Francisco. This new norm in Manchester, which is not okay, and I, I had a um I did email my alderman Bill Berry and he didn't disagree. Um the senior center Cash and Senior Center over on Main Street in West Manchester it was built by donations yeah. There was money raised yeah. to be a center for the seniors. I'm they just call saying. it a public it private, and then they play it both ways depending on who they, they're trying to arrest I mean, in they front did of raise it, the like pe me. The people who raised the <laughs> uh, were involved in that fundraising. Uh, most of them have probably since passed. That was to provide some place for our seniors to go, and that's what the seniors. And it's a is. really nice it's place. A nice building. I went in there once, and I was like, "Man, I can't yeah. wait to be old so enough to sit next to this there. fire." Yeah, now and this is where we're gonna have a warming shelter. We're gonna put the the homeless overnight, and there was like you were saying this weekend. There were we think twenty on Friday night, eight on Saturday night, seven on Sunday night. But the problem is, is that there are seniors that go there every morning for their. This is their life. You know, they go to the senior center, they go to yoga, they go to you know whatever is going on. On that day they learn computer skills but now we're gonna put the and we're paying to transport the homeless there mm -hmm. we're we're now we their found stuff. bus drivers and mm -hmm. um we're paying aramark oh, to Ubering, clean the place every day and it's simply not okay because that is a block or two buildings away from west high, west school. high school um there's also another school around the corner right, yep. it's just not it's just the not vape good. store is right there. Yeah. So now you're putting you're, vices next to the, the users. Right. <laughs> so I actually called them yesterday because I got a lot of uh, elderly pe people calling me. Like, because people call me all the time because they're not getting what they need from the city yep. officials. So they call me because they know that I'll I'll be their voice. So I I've gotten a lot of calls from the elderly saying like we're afraid of bed bugs because infections yep. are deadly for the, yep. the elderly. Yeah. We've been isolated through COVID. Like we need this space. So I was talking to um, the principal over. At Holy Family Academy, he's like, listen, we have a hall here. If they want to move some things over here, they can use the hall. The seniors don't want to be moved. I think right. it's very generous of him, but they don't want. To, they feel like they're being cast out. Yeah. So but when I talk to them the and I seniors well, from the senior center, center to put in the homeless, better than not pooping on the I, sidewalks. I completely <laughs> agree. But since they're going to, they they seem to have doubled down on this. The seniors need some place to go, right? No, for their that's services. The, thing. the seniors shouldn't have to go anyway. I, I agree. If they we're going to move the homeless. We, move them the city somewhere owns else. The bus station yes. that they live around outside already that we've cleaned up numerous times. I'm pretty sure that poop picture was from that. Mm -hmm. Um. Open that up. Make that a warming sh center. I suggested to my alderman, and he got that. It, I did say I was being facetious with a qualification. Let's put them in City Hall. Seriously. <laughs> let's house We've these 20 the people in City Hall. And, the I said, right down and, he sa and I said, I say it facetiously, but it makes no less sense than putting them in the senior center. Right. Well, all right, right ladies, we're out of time. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Victoria will have to come back we'll, and visit we'll with us more you often. Yeah. Um, he does need an hour. If you we see do. George the Burge, please do call the crime line, 603-624-4040. If you have any pictures of debris around town or whatever and you want to email them to us, send it to manchtalk at gmail.com and we'll, we can talk about that. Um, meanwhile, the weather's supposed to be warm in the daytime. Um, check out Carla's book, The Ecstatic Pessimist. Pessimist. And um, we're getting total wrap-up, so that's all we got. Thanks, guys.